you there. Before I get started with the video, I just wanted to mention for those who don't know about using different glues and paints on foam, if you don't use products that are completely water-based, it'll eat through your, your project like acid. So anything that's fuel-based, avoid it like the plague. And if you don't know if it's fuel-based or not, maybe give it a, a smell test. And if you feel happy for 10 seconds after that, you know it's probably fuel-based and you should avoid that one. I hope you enjoy the uh, the Elven Library. I cut some sheets of XPS insulation foam and used a template that I'd made from cardboard just to shape the windows, cut them out and hot glued the whole thing together. I'm just roughly marking where I'm going to cut away with a knife just to make it look a little more like ruins and broken brickwork and I'm just going to cut it with a knife really roughly and uh, use my trusty lump of concrete just to really pull away at the foam so it gives it a really natural texture. I haven't yet started ripping away with the concrete I just want to sort of get an all-round feel for the shape the base is going to be along with the actual building itself just so it's got a nice sort of flow to it. I roughly want a sort of a, a rounded base, take those sharp angles away. I'll just crudely cut them off and then start attacking it with the concrete. I should have pre-sanded this piece of um, foam, but it doesn't matter, I'll do it later. But do make sure you sand it, otherwise your ink or paint won't absorb into it properly. And you can see where I've ripped it away with that lump of concrete. It gives a really amazing uneven effect. Helps it look a lot more natural in the end. I gave it a light coat of watered down black acrylic paint and then I've applied some brown ink and especially put the ink into those wells that I had torn away with the, um, with the concrete. I didn't film all the etching and lines that I had drawn into this. I didn't think it was necessary. But just use a ruler and a pencil and just mark out anywhere you want bricks or tiles. It's pretty basic stuff. It looks great once you get the paint down on it. These little bookshelves, just the XPS foam again, etched with a ruler and a pencil, creating the lines for the shelves and then the books individually. I gave them a couple of coats of the brown ink. It soaks up beautifully into this foam, so you get every little part of it, and it really brings out all the lines and, and etching that you create. You, you get no fill when it's um, the ink. You have to worry about it taking up anything that you've created as paint would often fill in the little spaces but this is almost like water it just goes into it I'm just using a burnt sienna for the red for the books I'm trying to use natural colors for even the objects in this project that aren't natural objects just so everything's cohesive and fits in project without standing out as individual pieces. I'm not sure what colour green this is, I'll just call it bookish green because it's uh, got that booky green colour about it. <laughs> but it, it works well along with the, the burnt sienna. I'm trying to just yeah, still say, stay a little neutral with the whole thing. This white that I'm using, it's got a bit of blue in it and brown in it, and it's watered down a little bit. When I apply it, it looks a lot more stark than it is, and it absorbs into the foam incredibly well. As you can see, when it's drying or dry, it's almost non-existent. So you have to do about two or three layers of this, this whitish paint. I started applying little pieces of gold here and there, and then did a couple of books with the gold and then I just went nuts with it. It just really made the whole thing look 
really amazingly good. So um, yeah, even though it's unnatural, it worked really well alongside the other books. They have quite a nice realistic look about them and they fit beautifully into the project. Again, this white has brown and black and blue in it. It looks pretty white when you put it down, but it's most definitely not. I just wanna dry brush it on and um, wait for it to soak in. You, you may need to do a second coat, depends on, on how much you applied the first time around. Just brings out all the little pieces that you've chipped away and drawn in and yeah, really nice for bringing out the highlights. This colour I've made, I'm just going to call it olive green because it kind of looks like an olive colour. So I'm just going to put that on and it sort of gives a nice feel of a mossy look about the, um, the brickwork. I am going to put more paint on top of it, but this still comes up through. It gives it a nice natural aged look, sort of a living aged look. This is sort of a, almost like a, a flesh colour. I, I don't know what you'd call it, but uh, it's just to once again lighten up. I always find the whole process of ageing anything is about lightening and then making it dirty and then lightening it and making it dirty again until you have, have it looking the way that you really want it to look. You can see it just starts picking up light again and just really highlighting all the little lines and cracks and things that you've you've created in your in your foam. The floor or the tiles, I am using the colours that I've previously used and they just altered them a little more with a bit of black and white to give it sort of a mortar colour. But I make sure that I use paint from the same little tub that I initially create. And, and use it through the whole project so everything has a uniform colour about it. I'm going to make everything dirty with the ink. At first I just give it um, kind of like a light wash, just wetting it down really, because once you've got it a little bit wet and then you start applying the ink or watered down paint, in the way that I'm going to do it, it will help it bleed. And you really want it to bleed naturally and just become very sort of spread out and, and absorb. Doing it in this, in this way, it's kind of like replicating what would happen over time if there was you know, water running down stone and then mould and, and dirt and build up would grow in these places where water was constantly sitting and running. And I'm just trying to mimic that. I did this about three times, I think it was. And after the initial one, this is the first one, I put a little bit of black into the watered down mixture. And then on the third go, I put more ink into it so it was darker yet again. I didn't apply quite as much, but I did it just so I would have contrast with everything that I'd already done. And once it's dry, you can really see the effect and weathered look about it, even with that mossy green color that's sort of coming back up through it. And it works very, very well. I'm going to put some paint onto the uh, the stone here. This green that I put on, it, it came out, yeah, I wasn't happy with it. So I made it really dirty after I'd finished it. This green, you can see that there's too much white in it and you've got to be really cautious when using white because it doesn't, 
lighten so much as it alters the pigment in the colours that you use and everything becomes a different colour than you'd, you'd like it to be. Perhaps brown and green would have been more effective in the first place. And just apply it sporadically so it, it looks weathered and worn. You can see after it's um, been darkened it looks far better. And for the last part of it I just made another light whitish colour and I did some highlights and I used it on these little wooden pieces that I made out of, of foam core board. And that's, um, that's the stage set, I suppose. I have a lot to do on it yet. I, I want to build a back and put in lights and stained glass windows and foliage, trees, furniture, a balcony, stairs, huge amounts of work so it'll probably be a three-part um, series this one i hope you enjoyed the video and uh, i'll keep on posting as i go and i'll see you next time <laughs>